All right, so in this final lecture, what we're going to do here is add one more feature, one more plugin to our app. This plugin will allow us to have a sort of contact the developer. Uh, I want, uh, if a person is having trouble or has a question or wants to give feedback, they can email us directly. There's a plugin for that. What I also want to do is add a little bit of social media to the app in that from our app, uh, we can send a tweet or post on Facebook from our app. Now, the purpose of that will be to um, do a little bit of free self-promotion in terms of if someone likes our app, I want them to help me promote my app by uh, going off to, the, uh, to their social media and telling people about it. So we're going to get this plugin. Go ahead and go to your web browser. And we're going to do a search. Go to any search engine, and we're going to search for a plugin call. Uh, we're going to search in terms of uh, Cordova social sharing. <clears throat> so Cordova social sharing. Remember, Cordova is the underlying technology that gives us the capabilities of our app to interact with the device capabilities. And sometimes you see results listed under phone gap. And phone gap and Cordova are the same thing, basically. So Cordova social sharing, you'll get a variety of results. I got 2.7 million results. But the one that I care about should be the first one. Phone gap slash Cordova social sharing plugin at GitHub, specifically blah 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 by Eddie Verbruggen. So if you see some other plugin called social sharing, it might work, but the one that I would like you to get for this project so that we know it works is by the developer Eddie Verbruggen. This is going to be similar to the barcode scanner in that this is not one of the, the core dozen apps that we get out of Cordova.com. This is some developer worked on this in their spare time, and uh, they had an issue that they needed solved, and they wrote the code and published it. And you see that a lot nowadays in open source, that people, for whatever reason, want to create a project and put it out there, oftentimes for free, maybe because they're very altruistic, maybe they want to get a little bit of internet fame, but then sometimes people do ask for donations, like a dollar or enough for a cup of coffee or whatever. And I would recommend that even though most of the things that we work with in this class are open source, like Pouch and all of that, I do recommend that if you find these open source projects useful, to donate to them. One dollar, ten dollars, whatever, uh, really helps these developers because most of them are, are not really doing it for the fame or the money of it. But if we kick them back a few dollars, I think that's helpful. In any case, this is the one we want, so click on that first result, and there's going to be the documentation. How does this work? A Cordova plugin to share text or a file or an address or all three via the native sharing widget. So if our app is running on an Android or an iPhone or a Windows device, it has its own uh, look and, f and feel and style. Those are the native features. So scrolling down. Uh, there's that donate button that you might want to hit at some point if you find this plugin useful. The description, what it does, okay, looks good. Screenshots, you can check that on your own. It's going to be, if you're on an iPhone, you'll get a pop-up that says right here, would you like to send a tweet, mail, message, etc. It's going to pop up for Twitter or Facebook, etc. We're going to use that to do a little self-promotion for the app. If you're on these other devices, you'll get it. It'll look like the other devices if you're on Android. This is going to depend also on what the person has installed. If they have LinkedIn installed, you will have the option for them to also share on LinkedIn. If they don't have LinkedIn, if they don't have Facebook, they will not appear on the menu. It's up to what they have on their device. On Windows, it'll look something like that. Okay, further, installation. This is going to be very similar to when we added the barcode scanner. We need, the, we need to add the unique ID of this plugin to our project. 
So before we leave this screen, you can copy the, this is on part three here, installation. You can copy the name of the plugin. The internal name of the plugin is Cordova dash plugin dash X dash social sharing. I'm going to copy that because that's what I'm going to need as an ID for uh, adding it in our config XML file. So I'll copy that and then I'll go to the config XML file of my project. And one thing I forgot to mention, but you might have figured it out, while we're still working on the project, it would be a good idea to switch that back to debug. If we uh, leave it on release, it will probably work, but we're still kind of working on the project again, so it's a good idea to put it back to debug. and also either device or simulator, although it won't look very good on the simulator because um, the simulator doesn't have, you know, Facebook or an email client and such like a real device. In the config XML, we'll go to plugins and custom. And in this plugin ID, this is where I can paste in the name of the plugin, Cordova-plugin dash x dash social sharing click the little arrow it'll connect to confirm that that's the correct plugin you should see there description share etc so add that plugin Now I've got installed barcode scanner, camera console, social sharing, splash screen, whitelist. The way the plugin works, looking at the documentation, the plugin can do a couple of things. Allow the person to share to social media or send an email. Somewhere on the documentation there's an example of email. So scrolling down a, a little bit, there is code here about how to send an email. The idea will be if the person wants to ask a question about the app to contact us as the developer, we'll have it set up so that there will be a button that says contact the developer. And it will then activate the person's email uh, account on their phone, Gmail, Apple Mail, whatever. And it's going to go via window.plugins.socialsharing.share via email. With then a variety of parameters included in the command. What's the message that you're going to send? What's the subject? Who is it going to be sent to? Uh, you can CC people, you can BCC people, you can attach an image, and then on success and an on error callback function. So same idea that we've seen previously in that we're trying to do something, there's a success or there's an error. And there's often options. The syntax of this is different than the other plugins in that the order of things, but it's still often the same idea. A method, options, success, failure. So we'll do, we'll do this. Um, I want a button uh, in the app that says contact the developer. I think we'll put it inside of the options screen. To make our button, let's open index.html. Let's go find our options screen. I think it's pop options or PG options or something. What do we call it? PG options. Yeah, the options screen, line 130. We've got that options screen that pops up to log out, delete collection. And now we're going to add a new button here, contact the developer. 
So in my case, line 141, I'll, bring, I'll put a new horizontal rule here to divide the screen. And I need a button, pretty much like the one up above, but just changed a little bit. You could save yourself some effort, perhaps, and copy and paste here. Because I need an A tag with an href to nowhere, data roll of button, data icon. I think it's either mail or email. email. <coughs> I think it's mail. It needs an ID. We'll say BTN send email. BTN email. That's good enough. BTN email. And we'll have the button say contact the developer. So simple button here uh, to initiate sending us an email. We've made buttons before, yes. Yes. We've made buttons before, and we um, will make another one, and we'll make it work the same sort of way. So, if this is an uh, HTML node, we need to make a JavaScript object of it. So let's switch over to the JavaScript. And we will go to our area where we've got our variables, our object definitions. JS object uh, for sending us an email. Var dollar L BTN email. So hopefully now after doing it enough times, we're used to the repetition of this in that, OK, I need to make an object. It's a var. What do I call it? We can call it anything, but we've been using this syntax, $el element. And then the jQuery selector, which searches for that HTML node right there, pound btn. It's the last day of class. No one should remember the, no, no one should forget the pound sign right there on the last day of class. OK, then we're going to create a, um, an events listener for that, as we've always done. We'll go to the end of our code. We'll start with the $LBTN.addEventListener. Or not event listener, $.onClick to run a function, function send email. And then we'll start to create our function for that. So at the end of our document, Event handler for sending us an email. Dollar L BTN email dot on click comma run the function function send email. We'll just call it function email function send email. Mm, yeah, function email. If we're saying we're calling a function called function email, then we need to define said function. So we'll back up to where we've got our function definitions and define a new one. Function to send us an email based on the social sharing plugin by Eddie Verbruggen, however his name is spelled. And I'm going to copy the link to that to have it in my notes. So function fn email. And fn email. Console log. This function is running.
And basically the documentation has an example of how to send an email. Um, we provide various parameters, but it's window dot plugins plural. Make sure that's a plugins plural. Social sharing. Curiously, it is not a capital S here, as we would have expected every other time. If you do put a capital S, it will not work. When Eddie Verbruggen was programming this, he forgot to put a capital S and never fixed it, I guess. Next, we've got share via capital V, email capital E. So we have a way to have the person select how they're going to connect via Twitter, via Facebook, Instagram, email, WhatsApp, whatever. We're specifically saying, let's have the person connect via email. We want them to send an email. We want them to send an email to us. I'm going to break apart the curly uh, the parentheses of share via email, because it'll be a lot easier to read when it's on multiple lines. Let's say and share via email. This one is uh, not in JSON format, so it's actually going to be OK to put uh, comments here. Uh, we'll do it this way. I'll say this comment. This first line here is uh, message body. It's a string, comma, comment, message subject field. It's a string, comma, comment, to field as an array of strings, comma, cc field as an array of strings. cc field as an array of strings. Now obviously the to field is who we're sending it to. What's a cc field? Carbon copy, it's who else we're sending it to. Okay, well, does anyone know what a bcc field is? Blind carbon copy. So you're going to send it to other people, but they will not see who else you sent it to. If ever you're tied in an email chain of hell where you're getting back and forth, I'm, why, why do I keep getting emailed? You got CC'd on something, and you're going to see everyone's email over and over and over as it gets sent. The smarter thing for that would have been to have you put into the BCC field where you don't see each other's email for privacy, for example. <clears throat> Next, attachments from the WW folder as a string with a full path. And I'll explain what some of these mean in just a moment, of course. Success callback function, comma, failure callback function, note no final comma. There is a comma after each one of these, except the last one. <laughs> Before the plugin, I'll say here, all fields required, but those you don't use should be set as null. I'm not going to use the CC field or the BCC field, but I cannot skip those lines. Therefore, I should put a placeholder of null according to the documentation.
throughout this whole time when we've talked about strings, what does that mean, data as a string? Quotations, quotation marks. It's just that we need to put it in quotation marks. So we're going to say quotes, comma, message. We'll say uh, regarding your app break. So this is going to pop up the person's email, email app, and it will fill in the start of the message regarding your app. They, of course, can remove it or leave it, but we're filling in a starting message for them to compose their, their email. Make sure you've got a comma here. This is a string. This will literally be written there, then comma, message body, next in quotes, because it's a string, the subject of this email. Quotes, comma, we'll say something like CBDB feedback. So the subject of their email is filled in here, which they can change if they would like. I think uh, Visual Studio might not like it, but I'm going to try to tab these over so that they're kind of lined up over here. I think usually when you save or you auto-correct it, it'll kind of compress it for you for efficiency. So don't worry if it doesn't keep it separated, but just for readability. Next here in square brackets, comma, square brackets is an array, which is a list of things, a list of <coughs> strings an email address as a string in quotes in an array, square brackets. So here would be something like example at example.com or john at example. Here I would like for you to try your real email to fully test this. Put in a real email that you can confirm because we're going to try to send that email, and hopefully you'll get it in your inbox to actually really look at it. But notice here we've got square brackets, and then quotes, and a comma. The CC field would be exactly the same. for someone else's email address. So conceivably what could th what this could be is, you know, um, this could be uh, our feedback our feedback email. We have an email specifically set up. I have an email specifically set up at my company website for me to get feedback from this app. It's also getting copied over to Janet who runs social media or something and and they need to see it to also do something about it and I could have a whole other blind carbon copy someone else could also get it but they um, but it will not be visible who else is getting it in this case like I said um, if I don't need to go that far to add BCC or even CC, I have to put a placeholder of null. So I won't actually really send it to anyone BCC. If you've got three email addresses you want to plug in there, sure. If you don't have any on anything else or any one of these, put null and don't forget the comma and no quotes on that. For the attachment as a string, so quotes, we need to um, have a path to any attachment, a graphic or a JPEG or a PDF or whatever. Depending on what you have in your project, we might, uh, just to see how it works, attach a graphic. So I have to take a quick look in my project, in my images. Um, I have the Cordova icon here. I have this comic icon over here and this one. Whatever you have, you can try to use it. I have cordova.ping in my images folder. 
So I have to write here www. I have to include the www part, and then any subfolders. For example, images, and then in my case slash <coughs> Cordova dot ping. Obviously, if I wanted to use one of these other graphics, twd one seven seven. JPEG. I have to include the WW part and then subfolders. I don't believe you can include a graphic that's outside of the WW folder. We have that res folder, right? That res folder has our app icon and stuff. I don't believe we can we can get uh, we can point to files over there. The closest would be that if you copied your icon, if you copied your icon out of the res folder and put it into the images folder, and then you've got a path here, www slash images slash icon 96 hpi h xhdpi, or if you obviously don't want any image here, put null with no quotes, but I want to try to attach an image just to see what it looks like. Okay, we've got success and failure. Function, parentheses, curly brace, comma, with a success object, and function, parentheses, curly brace, with a failure object no final comma no final comma in the parameters Inside these curly braces, then we can put a variety of things, and we'll just put some simple uh, console feedback. Console log semicolon success plus success. That success object has some data there, so in the console. If this was, if the email was sent, it'll say success plus whatever message. This plugin automatically gives back. Okay, failure will be the exact same thing. Console log failure plus whatever the failure object is for us to debug it. We'll test if this works in a moment, but it's it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? That we add the plugin, we create a button, then we create the variable in the event listener and the function, and then we just follow the documentation about how does it work. And that's a lot about what uh, building your own app is. You don't have to have a whole 600 book, 600 page book memorized. You need to know how to do the things that you need to do for your project. You need a book for it, or a website, or a tutorial, or a video about it, and then you fill it in how you need it. Uh, as I've said, I've taught this class for five years, and these apps have evolved. And a few semesters ago, I changed the app completely. I was tired of that old app. Now this is a newer version of the app, and I kind of wrote it from scratch. But based on things that I've taught before, and new things that I wanted to try, and things that students were asking for, so I looked it up. How do you send an email in JavaScript, specifically Cordova. So I found that plugin. How do you um, create a, a database um, as a web app? So I looked it up. I found an answer. I, trouble, I troubleshot it. I tested it. I got a solution. There's so many ways to do these things. There's no wrong answer. This is one way to do it. Before we test it, we will add the other feature that I wanted to add with this, which is to send 
a Facebook message or a tweet and it's gonna be this exact same plugin this plugin can let you do both of those things uh, send emails send tweets etc since we've already got the plugin installed it's just a matter of using it okay that means I need a button to connect to social media that means that means I need the variable representing that button the event listener for that button and then the function for that button so let's go back to the HTML file. I added a button, contact the developer. I'm going to add another button, share on social media. Remember the trick, control D duplicates, share on social media. btn share icon star or maybe heart because you give like hearts and stuff on uh, social media in the HTML file just another button href to nowhere data role as a button some icon heart some ID and some text Then, then in the JavaScript we'll create that that object okay so in the JavaScript Back where we've got all of our variables. Object for sending for connecting to social media. Our dollar L BTN share. Equal to jQuery selector pound btn share okay. we'll create the on click event listener At the end of our code, then we will create the event handler. For connecting to social media, dollar LBTN share dot on click function share. Then we define the function. Function fn share. We'll do the console log output just to confirm that function is running. And the actual guts of that function will be very similar to what we did with email. Just a little variation, because that plugin can do both. It can be set up to send an email, or it can be set up to connect to social media. And letting the person select send this to Twitter, send it to Facebook, send it on to LinkedIn. It's a very versatile plugin for free. That's why there's that donate button. Uh, function uh, to uh, connect to social media. Same plugin as above. Now, of course, the danger about saying same plugin as above is that you may change your code and you rearrange things. Same plugin as social 
social sharing plugin. Unshan FN share. End of FN share. Similar to before, window.plugins with an S, social sharing, but this time just generically share, not share via email. This is the one then that will allow the person to select what app they're going to share with based on what apps are on their device. Break this apart into multiple lines like the previous one. End of dot share. And it's also going to have like six or so parameters here, uh, similar to the uh, email, but a little bit different. So the first parameter message as a string, comma. Subject as a string, however, optional and based on the network. When you post on some networks, like let's say LinkedIn, uh, you, you write your, your message on LinkedIn, you can also put like a subject. But when you post over on Twitter, there's no subject, it's just the tweet. So this subject may be accepted by the network or ignored by the network. Or you can put it as null so that nothing gets sent. Next is an attachment. And this one is actually different. The attachment here is different than the email. Attachment as an array of strings. Based on www folder. This one's different. URL. You can embed a link. Oftentimes, when you share on social media, uh, you are uh, also adding a link so that people can further follow the link and read more. And it, then it ends with the uh, success function or failure function. No final comma. So let's say the purpose, how we're going to repurpose this plugin for ourselves is, if the person likes our app, we want them to help us promote it. We want them to share it on their Facebook or their Twitter, their LinkedIn, to tell people about our app. So we're going to fill in these fields in that way. They can, of course, change any of these things. But we'll get it started by saying, for example, message, quotes, comma. Check out the CBDB app. The 
the subject, which some networks will accept and some will ignore. Download CBDB today. In my case, uh, I think it would be a good idea uh, to use my uh, terrible icon here for my app. And since it's in the res folder, I can't reach it. So I'm going to, in my case, I'm going to copy it and put it into my images folder so that then I can have it as part of my path. I want people to tweet about my app, and it'll have my app's icon. I want them to post on Facebook about my app, so it'll have my app's icon. It's got to be in a, in a square brackets, which is an array. What's that? I would recommend the biggest one, because it's usually the highest quality one, so 96. If you have a larger one than that, use that one. And then the path to it, www um, slash images slash, in my case, icon dash 96 dash xhdpi dot png. Since this is an array, that technically means that I, I can put more than one item. An array is a collection of items. So within the square brackets, I could then add another I, another icon. So two graphics are being attached to this share over to Twitter or Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever. And that's happening inside the square brackets, separated by commas, because it's an array. String right here, we won't really be able to complete this one. But the idea here is this could have the link to go directly to download your app. Once, if you choose to fully pub publish your app, your app will have an official address on Amazon.com. You search for it yourself on Amazon.com. You'll find your app. You can copy and paste the link to your app. Uh, so just I'm just going to put whatever right here, like Amazon.com, CBDB. This is going to be a completely irrelevant link that won't work at all. But I'm going to attach it. And if I had the link to my app on Amazon, I would obviously add it here. This is a chicken or the egg thing. I haven't published it yet, so I don't know my address. But I need to publish it to get my address. But I can't publish it because I don't have the address here yet. Well, you would release if you release the version 1 on Tuesday, and now we're adding a little bit more for version 2, there is an address for it that existed from Tuesday if you published. If you didn't, that's OK. If this, if this link here is not correct in the real world, it's OK. That's not going to affect your grade. But notice that the idea is this can be an address. This is where my app is. Go download it. And then we've got our function, parentheses, curly brace, comma, success. I'm just going to copy those two exactly as they are up here. The ones that we did for email, I'm just copying them exactly as is, because it's the same thing. Two functions of success or failure objects that are returned. Put it to the console, success, failure, just put it to the console, that's it. No final comma, yes comma. And this is our share via what they want to share via whatever they have. Twitter, Facebook. And I think on these we've got we've got installed, I guess. What do we have on these? Probably not that much actually. Google Plus. email so you can do a, a test on that you should have a couple of new buttons in your options screen 
screen, one to send an email, one to share on social media. When you get it loaded on your device, then you can try to hit the button for email and see if it pops up Gmail. You can try to send an email with it. Again, if you put a real email address up here, that would be the best way to test this. These are not real emails. No one's going to get these. So you should have real emails over here just to try to fully test it. And then if you've got um, some social media, you can see it there too. So mine's going to take a moment to deploy. But uh, that's what I wanted to show here on the final lecture that here's another plugin with a specific task connecting to social media or email. Using it is not extremely complex. It's all based on the documentation. The hardest part is finding the right plugin to do this. And there's plenty of plugins that will do these tasks. I found one that seems to work well in these past semesters, so we're using it again. But for the final assessment, um, I would like that this uh, final bit of code is part of your final project to show that you've added it kind of completely. And based on what is in the network folder, if you haven't seen that yet, in the network folder I put the final requirements for the final assessment. You needed to have created a developer, a developer account at Amazon. So we did that together. That should be done. You needed to create a listing for your app. So name it whatever. Your last name would be good. Complete all the required tabs. So make sure you've got green check marks on all of those tabs. You must have icons and screenshots. I didn't walk you through creating icons and screenshots, so we've had ex some experience in creating some graphics before. You must have descriptions. I filled in like one sentence. Hopefully you do a little bit more then either have all of the green marks checked and you don't have to click submit you need all the green check marks or you could have all the green check marks and click submit and then we can actually see your app on the real app store <clears throat> either of those will fulfill that 10 points due by 930 you have as much time to work on it I'll put the final code in the folder in a moment that's the final assessment Mine finally came up here. Let me test it out. I'm going to go up to the options. I've got some new buttons. Contact the developer and share on social. I click contact. It pops up. Would you like to go to Gmail? Yes. Gmail pops up and my subjects are filled in and I've got my attachment. So it's going to come from the account, go to the to, go to the CC, feedback, subject message filled in. All of that can be changed. These are just placeholders, so I, I'm going to actually remove it and put my real email address. And I'll send it. Sending message. And I'll wait a moment, and I uh, hope to get my email on my device in a moment. While I'm waiting for that, the other thing, the social. I click on social. Pops up. Gives me the choice of Gmail, Maps, Bluetooth, Upload. If I had Twitter or Facebook and such, that would be part of the list there, but I guess these devices don't have it, or mine doesn't but then it would allow me connect to connect to Facebook to post on Facebook. Yes, just one moment. Let me finish my thought here. So if I check my inbox, I have that um, I have that email, and that uh, that works there. So 
We'll have lab time until 9.30 for you to work on this. I'm going to put a um, sign-up sheet on the, uh, on, the, on the board in a moment, and then we'll do the assessment, and you can enjoy here, and uh, call me over, and we'll finish up the class.